one of the difficult things that happened this year um, that I'm sure a lot of people want to know about is the whole Red S situation. Um, the commentary box hot mic incident is, I think, yeah. what kind of kicked off the whole discussion. Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts about, I guess, what happened there and sure. your stance on the topic? Yeah, I'm totally happy to say what happened as well, because it's it's there was no kind of secret to it. So and so the hot mic thing. So generally, so we are uh, so we have microphones in the commentary box and obviously there's an on air button and an off air button. And with that one, it was an exterior TV company and they'd inadvertently had us on air, but they hadn't been streaming our signal. And then someone pressed a button and streamed a couple of seconds of the signal. Now, like, I, I understand about hot mics, and it's something I'm quite careful about, but it's hard because sometimes that athlete's in the box with you for maybe like 15 minutes before it starts, and you're going to have a conversation about stuff, but I'm quite aware, but sometimes it goes wrong, and yeah, the Alana thing. So with, with Alana, basically, we'd actually been talking about the fact that uh, she was retiring because no one really knew, and she'd said to me before Innsbruck that she she wanted to do the, comp she, the, the commentating one at that finals because it would be her last event, and she wanted to announce it, and it was like this whole thing. And I was aware that it was happening, but no one else knew. And, you know, so it was mainly discussing that. Um, and Alana is very, very good at commentating. And certainly I think has a future when she stops Olympic qualifying, hopefully Olympic competing. Um, you know, she's got a future in that. But one of the things she was talking about was she wanted to talk about um, the Red S issue. And she was asking me to sort of, I, I said, is there anything you want to, it started with me saying, is there anything apart from your retirement that you don't want me to say or that you want to cover when we talk about the fact that you're moving away from the sport. And, and she said, I'd like to talk about uh, the issue of Red S and what the IFSC is doing. And what I said was, okay. And my exact words were, because I played it in my head a million times because I knew this would happen one day. I said, um, I said okay, uh, obviously do what you want. It might not be the best time for it now and then and that there was a section in the middle of all that that got caught on the hot mic before the guy turned it off and i finished the sentence which wasn't caught by saying you know uh might not be the best time to do it on air like right now um but if you want to do it i'm not going to stop you because I, i'm not you know at the end of the day i'm asked to it's difficult like i work for the ifsc more than the athletes do but i and i'm certainly asked to, i i would never touch topics like that it's not my role but I also I'm not going to stop an athlete if they have something to say. But at the same time, it's, you know, we it's run like a professional commentating team and it has to have that different angle. So I was happy with Alana to say what she wanted to say. My my concern was that the conversation would become entirely about that thing on a night where she's trying to talk about other things. And also that she couldn't necessarily express what she wanted to express in what would have to be about a sentence to fill the time between the video finishing and the first set of things coming on screen that we have to talk about. So, and I knew that if she said something, it would be very quick and she would feel a little bit perhaps unfulfilled about it, but it was up to her. And I genuinely didn't know whether we, when we started speaking, whether she would bring it up or not. And if she brought it up, I was going to let her have her moment and say what she wanted to say. And then, move on in terms of like I wasn't going to get into a discussion but it was she can say what she wanted to she decided not to and then later put out the statement and then said what she wanted to do and I talked to her about it I talked to her about that it had been caught that we took it off because it was like I just very strongly believe that it was it, it was such an important thing that she wanted to say that it needed to have the full impact of how she wanted to say it in the way that she wanted to do it and I'm glad that she did it that way because I think then the conversation could develop. That's what I think anyway. That helps a lot. We, I had no idea about what happened after the fact of the hot mic incident, so that's really interesting to know. I, 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 had, a, I had a conversation. I was like devastated. It's the worst thing because I felt professionally really silly about it because like I know about hot mics. It's not the athlete's job to think about that. It's my job to think about that. But like she literally said it about 10 seconds before we started talking as well. Like it was like as the music started to roll up, she said this thing and I had like uh, like 20 seconds to try to respond. But I'm annoyed it got caught because I, I didn't want it to become about a hot mic thing. I wanted it to become about what Alana wanted to say. Um, 
So I was disappointed that it started off that way. But I, I think to Alana's credit, an enormous credit, the way that she sort of didn't sort of try to cover up the fact that we had this hot mic and we'd have a private conversation, but she just rolled with it and said what she wanted to say and just didn't make it about that. And I just, I think it was just an incredible way of, of her getting her opinion across. And I think... Not that it was like a good thing that it happened, but it definitely brought a lot more eyes to the issue and probably helped her platform and get yeah. just getting people to wonder what it was about. 